Hey all you cool cats and kittens. Today we're going to be talking about something called significant figures or significant digits. And really, when you're talking about how many significant figures are in a measurement, what you're describing is how detailed that measurement is. So these are going to be uh, some notes with some examples about significant figures and how to tell how many significant figures or how detailed a measurement is. So what a significant figure is, is it's a digit in a number that is providing some level of detail to that measurement. And so that means the more significant figures or significant digits are in a measurement, the more detail it has. it is more precise. The general rule about if a digit or a figure in a number is contributing to its amount of detail is that all known and estimated digits are significant in a measurement. And so we'll look at two different measuring tools that would both be measuring 50 milliliters of water. In a 100 milliliter beaker, each of the lines represents 10 milliliters. And so if a level of water were right on this line, we could say that it is 50 milliliters. The five in the tens place would be a known digit and the zero would be estimated. Now, we had talked before that to show that this, this was the estimated digit and not this, a decimal point would go after it. We're going to contrast that with 50 milliliters of water measured in a 250 milliliter beaker. The 250 milliliter beaker has markings only for every 25 milliliters. In this one, because there are not marks for every 10 milliliters, the tens place is estimated. So if we go back to what our definition of a significant figure is, we can see that this measurement has two sig figs in it. This measurement has only one sig fig. This measurement was made with more detail. This was made with less because it has fewer significant figures. So if you kind of remember that general rule, that can get you through all of these problems because you're, the goal of this is that you're going to be able to look at a measurement that's written on paper and tell how precise it is and tell how many sig figs it has. There are specific rules, but if you just remember this general rule that all of the known and estimated digits are significant, that should be enough that you can figure them out. But for people who need more concrete rules, there are some that I will put down and we'll see how those rules apply to some examples. Before we move on, recall that what this was called, 
after the estimated digit if you still need a zero for the number to make sense that this was a placeholder. Rule one is that all non-zero digits represented significant digits, significant figures. And so the remaining rules are going to deal with zeros, if they are significant or not. And what it's gonna come down to is, were they a placeholding zero or were they an estimated zero? So rule two is about the zeros that are placeholders that come after the estimated digit. And so a placeholding zero was denoted that it was a placeholder by not having a decimal. So a trailing zero that's after any non-zero digits that's trailing is only significant if there is a decimal point. There are also placeholding zeros in very small numbers. The placeholding zeros in small numbers come before any non-zero digits. So those are called leading zeros. The next rule, and by the way, these rules really could have gone in any order. Um, so I'm just going to call them like this. Uh, but the next rule would be if there is a zero between two non-zero digits sandwiched and those zeros are significant. And the last rule doesn't deal with zeros, but it deals with numbers that were counted or exact numbers. Because remember, how many sig figs are in a digit or a number, a measurement, are a reflection of how detailed that measurement is. And so if you are counting like a number of people and you can count 10 people, you know that that is an exact number. It is infinitely precise. And so a counting number uh, is considered to be infinitely precise. So now we're going to look at a few examples to see how these rules apply. So in this first measurement, 230 milliliters with no decimal point after the zero, there are only two significant figures, the two and the three because of what we called rule one. And this trailing zero so what this means is that when this was measured, this was a known digit, this was estimated, and this was a placeholder if there's no decimal point after it. In this measurement, there is a decimal point after the zero. And what this means is that the two was known from this measuring equipment, the three was known, and the zero was the estimated digit. So this has three sig figs. And in this last, out of this triplet, all of these are significant. These are both trailing zeros and they both are significant because of the decimal point. Now in this first one, these are leading zeros and they are placeholders as well. So leading zeros count as placeholders, and so they are not significant, only the two and the one. Putting a two in front of the entire thing means that now those zeros are. This is an example of the sandwich rule. So you have two digits that definitely are significant, they're not in zero, and these are sandwiched in between them. So now those two zeros are significant, and this 
number, this measurement has five significant figures. And in this last one, it looks very similar to the first of this set, except that instead of a one, it is a zero. So that is a trailing zero, and this number does have a decimal point. And so that means that that zero is significant. The leading zeros are still not significant. So this has two sig figs, the two and the trailing zero because of the decimal point. So that's that. Pretty clear, right? If you're thinking no, don't worry. Um, things will become more clear as we practice them more. A lot of the things that we learn in chemistry are not like specific facts, but you should consider them skills. And counting sig figs or recognizing significant figures is a skill just like riding a bike. You can't read a book about riding a bike and do it immediately. You can't look at a set of notes or read about significant figures and be able to identify them right away. So we're gonna practice. Right? I'll catch you in the flippity flop.